57 years ago, an alien race known as the Nunsuch attacked Earth and killed 95% of humanity. The survivors were forced to live underground and only a few ignorant stragglers refused to leave the surface. For anyone else, the only way to come back outside is to become a soldier and take a job at an outpost, where tours of duty last 100 days. Once the soldiers finish their training, they receive the usual speech about fighting for their future and a bunch of tanks take them to their respective outposts. On their way out, they watch how other soldiers drag the stragglers into a fort known as Exilium. Eventually the tank stops at the Cerberus outpost to drop someone, who fails to get inside the bunker because the door is jammed. Instead he takes the stairs to the watchtower and the computer pricks his finger to activate through DNA identification. The system congratulates him on the start of his service and reminds him of his duties, he must maintain the defense circle, monitor the security cameras, keep an eye out for the nunsuch, and if he sees any stragglers, he must take them to Exilium. Someone runs a system check and contacts his commander to report that he didn't find the soldier he was supposed to replace, but the commander explains that the previous guard had to be evacuated because of medical reasons. He also reminds someone that he must report every 12 hours and that he's forbidden to leave his operational area. Afterward, someone checks the dining hall and finds it in a messy state, even stepping on some broken glass. To settle in, he proceeds to clean up, arrange his rations, and polish the glasses. In the evening, he reports everything is in order and requires the code for the bunker. Since the entrance is damaged, he'll have to go outside and take an alternate door. Once he's inside the bunker, he's delighted to find a little bobblehead of Elvis and takes it for his desk. Next, he spends a few hours of the night keeping watch outside for any aliens while enjoying a cigarette. That night when he goes to sleep, he dreams of kids in white dancing around. From then on, someone goes through the same routine anyway. The system wakes him up and reminds him of how many days are left until the end of his service, then someone exercises on the balcony and has a shower which reveals all soldiers have a special tattoo on their necks. This is followed by a system check, a territory check, and a meal made with very basic rations. During his first meal, he sees a shadow passing by and discovers there's a rat in the building, but it hides as soon as he comes closer. In the evenings, someone does his daily report and receives a new bunker coat, but he doesn't mention the rat. Every night he also keeps dreaming about the dancing children. Days start to pass and someone always goes through the same routine, which combined with the loneliness is starting to take its toll on him. After two weeks, he wakes up to find the rat on his stomach. Excited, someone grabs it and tries to keep it under his helmet for a better look, but as soon as he turns around the rat escapes. Suddenly an alarm starts ringing and the system alerts someone of an attack from the nunsuch near another outpost. Someone runs to the balcony and sees explosions in the distance while hearing from the computer that the stragglers rescued by that outpost were all killed. Just in case, someone double checks the security cameras and sees something moving in the bushes, so he reports it to his commander as a possible alien. However his boss dismisses it as some animal because the nunsuch aren't in his area. Some days later, the rat approaches someone while he's eating, and he manages to make it stay by offering some food. Now the rat has become his companion, so someone names it Doc. That day, an alarm alerts him of a malfunction in one of the cameras, and someone has to go outside to do technical maintenance. He's always keeping an eye on his surroundings and every animal noise he hears gets on his nerves. When he finds the camera, he fixes it quickly, but before he can leave he hears a weird noise and when he looks around he finds a tree covered with scratches. He decides to keep going and on another tree, he discovers a dead bird holding the tags of Vax-7, which is the name of the soldier he replaced. At that moment, the system alerts him of toxic emissions in the area, so someone puts a filter on the helmet and gets going again as he avoids the weird green smoke. However he stops when he sees a weird moss on a tree, and he's so curious that he takes his helmet off just to taste it. When he returns to the outpost, he reports everything he saw, but his concerns are dismissed. The commander assures him that Vax-7 is recovering in Exilium and blames the dead bird on a crazy straggler because the nunsuch don't attack animals. After hanging up, someone puts a knife between his arm and his device brace just to feel something. A few days later, someone goes out on another territory check and hears the alarm for toxic emissions. As the green smoke fills the area, someone discovers another dead bird on a tree and suddenly he hears those weird noises again. He turns around and is shocked to find a strange creature so he tries chasing after it, but the monster simply disappears. Afterward he tries reporting the incident, but since the defense ring is intact, the commander still assumes it was some kind of animal. Getting suspicious, someone decides to search the bunker for clues and is surprised to discover a blood stain on the wall behind some furniture. He brings a stool over and by testing the angle of his gun, he confirms that Vax-7 probably self-deleted. Desperate for answers, someone tries to access the security recordings but the system denies him access. Next, he breaks into Vax-7's locker and among his belongings he finds an old radio and a sketchbook. The drawing shows some refugees, the birds in the forest, Doc, and his own outpost making a connection to the neighboring post called Graham. Sadly someone doesn't understand the meaning. Weeks pass and someone can't stop thinking about the drawing, so he takes it with him and during his next territory check, he actually tries to visit Graham. 
However he discovers that he can't cross the perimeter because an implant in his leg makes him hurt as soon as he steps outside the ring. Someone doesn't give up and climbs a tree, waving his hand and reflecting sunlight on back Seven's tag to try to get the attention of Graham's soldier, but nothing happens. When he returns to his outpost, someone decides to check the recordings of his own work when suddenly the computer fails and most screens go out. At that moment he sees himself on camera with something standing behind him, but when he turns around, the power goes out. His brace indicates there are no intrusions, but someone still looks around with a flashlight and rushes out to find the creature. He also shoots a flare for more visibility, but the only thing he finds are baby birds. The power comes back in the outpost, so someone rushes back to report the malfunction in the presence of the creature. The commander doesn't believe anything could have crossed the ring without an alarm because the rings have their own power supply, and promises to send a technician to check on the system soon. After hanging up, someone tries to access the archive again, but all the old stuff was lost because of the electrical surge. The only image left is the last few minutes, and someone confirms there was something behind him. The next day someone tries to go through the usual routine, but he starts feeling sick. He takes some medicine, but he's so upset and nervous that he breaks a glass when he tries to clean it. Suddenly he hears a children's song coming from the locker and discovers it's the radio. It's Kerr 4, the soldier at the Graham outpost, and he's asking for Vax 7. Someone tells him about the replacement and Kerr 4 immediately hangs up, saying communication among outposts is forbidden. Later the electricity surges again, so someone calls the commander to ask about the technician, who was supposed to be there days ago. The commander explains there was an attack on another post with no survivors, so the technician is moving slowly to avoid any unnecessary risks. After hanging up, someone tells Doc that he doesn't trust his superiors anymore. Days continue to pass and someone is still sick. While doing another territory check, he sees something moving inside some ruins and follows it to discover a mother with her child. He tries to appear friendly and offers his help to reach shelter, but the woman is too scared and runs away with the child. Someone immediately tries to follow them, but he steps on the ring limits and the leg implant stops him. Afterward, someone goes back and hears about an attack on another outpost. Tired and frustrated, someone ignores the voice and tells Doc about his dreams. It turns out that nobody dreams anymore nowadays, and those who do are seen as crazy, so someone hadn't told anyone until now because Doc is the only one he trusts. In the evening, someone tries using the radio to contact Kerr 4 again, but he never gets an answer. He decides to enter the forest at night for a change, and when he comes across a deer, he shoots it. Its antlers get stuck on a tree and someone proceeds to eat the animal raw, proving he's slowly losing his mind. In the morning, he shoots some cans just for fun and climbs a tree to try using the radio again. Kerr 4 continues to ignore him, and it makes him so angry that he starts yelling. On his way back, he stops when he sees a flower, which is a rare sight. At that moment the alarm announces incoming toxic emissions, and because someone isn't wearing his helmet, he falls as he begins to feel sick. In the distance, he notices a bunch of destroyed trees and the creature appearing again, but then he passes out. He wakes up the next morning feeling extremely dizzy and sends a message through the radio, telling Kerr 4 that the Nunsuch have infiltrated his area and they may have captured Vax 7. Afterward, someone returns to the outpost and waits for the days to pass while sketching in the notebook and talking to Doc. He doesn't go out anymore because he prefers the safety of the outpost. When there are only 14 days left, an alarm suddenly starts ringing, but it turns out it's the technician Mac, who confirms that he was delayed because of the attack on the other outpost. He saw the destruction of the building but not the victims, claiming that the cleaners had already taken care of everything when he passed by. When Mac sits at the computer, he recognizes the Elvis bobblehead in the sketchbook. It turns out he's been here before and thinks Vax 7 was very unstable. Someone shows him the recording of the creature behind him, but Mac says it's just someone himself because of a system glitch that overlaps images. Next Mac checks the system and notices that the cameras in the defense ring are down, which doesn't make sense because someone just recharged them. They proceed to do a system check and while they work, Doc climbs on the desk. When Mac sees it, he shoves it away and sends it flying. An upset someone rushes after it and talks to it until Doc opens its eyes to prove it's still alive while Mac judges him for it, saying he's as crazy as Vax 7. Someone is so furious that he aims his gun at Mac and asks him to unlock the archive video recordings, which is against the rules. Mac refuses because he doesn't believe that someone will dare to kill him, but someone proves him wrong by hitting him twice. Truly scared now, Mac apologizes to Doc and tries to access the archive, successfully bypassing the firewall. However they'll still need two personal codes to access it, it's a leftover from the days when there were six guards per outpost. Someone still refuses to let him go so Mac stabs him with a screwdriver and a fight ensues. Even if he's hurt, someone quickly overpowers Mac, however Mac retaliates by hitting someone on his wound. Someone wastes no time in starting choking Mac by pressing on his breathing device, but he pulls back when he notices his eye going red. While someone retrieves his gun, Mac shares his experience with the aliens when he was a soldier many years ago. His team's helicopter crashed in the desert, and only he and one more soldier survived. Mac went looking for help, and when he came back, 
his partner was missing both ears. Later when a sandstorm hit them, he finally saw the shadows of the nunsuch hiding in the storm, and they quickly killed his teammate. Their screaming also caused Max's ears to start bleeding and his body felt unbearable pain, making him realize that his friend got rid of his own ears to make it stop. When rescuers finally found Mac, his lungs were full of sand and his larynx heavily damaged, this is why he must wear the device to breathe now. In case he needs him again later, someone decides to lock up Mac in the bunker. Then he takes care of his wounds and gets some medicine before sending his report, pretending everything is fine. When the commander asks about Mac, someone says he already fixed everything and left. Afterward, he finally gets in contact with Kerr 4 and gets his code so he can access the archive. Someone finds the old videos and watches Vax 7 start well with his job, going through the routine and befriending Doc. However Vax 7 slowly started to lose his mind and greatly damaged the computers, which explains the power failures. Someone calls Kerr 4 to tell him what he's seen and shares his theory, he thinks the nunsuch don't exist. Nobody ever actually saw the aliens or the bodies they supposedly mutilated, so he believes the government made them up to send people into Exilium. Since the world's natural resources were running out, the privileged classes wanted to keep them for themselves while the soldiers were hunting down the stragglers to hide them underground and even kill them. It would explain why the mother and the child didn't want to be rescued by him. Kerr 4 doesn't believe any of this and thinks someone is as crazy as Vax 7, so he plays the same song from last time, which is an old nursery rhyme that used to calm Vax 7 down. However someone doesn't like it and hangs up. A few days later when someone only has a week of work left, he's having trouble staying sane and doesn't see Doc hiding inside a can. Suddenly the system announces that the nunsuch are advancing through the northern border, but it only causes someone to rage and he throws the can at the screen before hitting it with something harder to actually destroy it. Then someone looks for Doc only to discover the poor little rat died when he threw the can. Having killed his best friend makes someone lose the last thread of sanity he had left, so he walks outside naked and lies down on the grass to wait for the green smoke. At that moment, the creature he's been seeing shows up and starts chasing him through the woods. Someone finds the antlers left by the deer and uses them to furiously beat the monster up until it's dead. However when he checks the body, someone makes a devastating discovery, this is Vax 7, whose insanity had made him go wild. Determined to reach the bottom of this, someone goes back and gets his gun before visiting Mac to tell him he doesn't believe his story and that his lies drove Vax 7 mad. He thinks spreading fear among the soldiers and the stragglers is all part of the government's plan. Mac doesn't care and is willing to leave someone to do whatever he wants, he only wishes to go back to his family, but someone needs him. He wants to turn off the defense ring's power supply. This would allow the nunsuch to enter the area, but since someone doesn't believe in them, he ignores Max's warnings and threatens to kill him until he explains how it's done. Afterward, someone calls Kerr 4 and tells him he'll visit him so they can finally be free of this madness. Then he packs all his things up and only leaves behind a drawing of his face. After freeing Mac, who leaves in his bike, someone burns his army tag and buries Doc on a proper grave. Next he runs through the forest until he reaches the ring, which immediately activates the pain in his leg. Someone just endures it as he follows Max's instructions to dig up the power cables to cut them off. This immediately triggers an alarm, but someone just smashes his brace to shut the system down, which turns off all the screens in his outpost at the same time. Minutes later, someone finally makes it to the Graham outpost and is surprised to find the doors open. He goes upstairs and finds the room completely wrecked, but there are no signs of Kerr 4 except for some blood and guts on the ground. Suddenly his ears start bleeding and hurting as he hears a loud screeching, so he approaches the window to have a shocking look at the reality. The nunsuch are indeed real and their spaceships are attacking the area because the defense rings are down, thanks to him. Feeling incredibly guilty, someone runs away and has to be fast enough to dodge all the attacks from the ships as he crosses the forest. A projectile hits the ground too close and sends him flying against a tree, but before they can shoot him again, Max shows up to rescue him. Unfortunately a nunsuch also appears, proving to be huge and disgusting, and it proceeds to destroy the vehicle and decapitate Mac. A terrified someone starts running again, dodging all the attacks until he makes it to the bunker, but he can't enter because he needs a new coat. Thankfully he manages to make his brace work and gets the new code to go inside, running toward the cell to lock it right before the nunsuch can catch him. He can hear them screeching in the corridor and his head starts to hurt, but he runs to hide when he notices they're breaking down the walls to enter. The alien finds him anyway and opens his mouth at the same time someone shoots his weapon, but the final result is left to the imagination. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.